All right, guys, we're going to make bluegrass baits of the color bluegrass. Now, look, I already have some chartreuse, and uh, I remelted it. See, sometimes we have color baits laying around and uh, colors, and we just remelt it. We don't have to make new. What I do is I put it in these tubs, okay? See, you can see some green there and some orange. I put it in these tubs, like I got four of them up here. And before I start making bait sometimes, I go through there and see if it's a color that I can use. Now I just add a little more chartreuse to that because I want it a little darker, all right? And actually, since it's gonna be bluegrass color, I want the chartreuse to be just a little darker. I'm gonna add a couple, one drop of lime right there is what I just added, guys. This is just lime. Whoa, that's one drop done it. That made it a little darker. Not much. Probably not enough where y'all can even see it. It's one shade. Now, you know, y'all know I do a lot of painting and stain, and I work with paint, so. I, that was probably a half of a shade. If you look at a color card and see the colors, like you almost got white, and as it goes to the top, it's a light cream. In between, it gets darker each time. That's called a shade. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to shoot the, this is going to be the tails. All right, this is the other half of the shad bodies, okay? Now, we gotta let that cool. I'm gonna let that, that cool. All right, I'm gonna set this back here and cover it so to keep it warm. So when, I, when I'm ready to use that, it won't take me as long to heat it. All right, guys, it's been a few minutes. These are small pieces, small molds, you know. You don't have to wait forever, but you need to wait three to five minutes. Three minutes is probably enough. All right, now, let me show you what I'm gonna do. My little baby scissors right here. They're easy to lose. I'm gonna cut these off. The one ring in front of the, one ring in front of the grub. The, uh, these are willow tails. For the tail, I mean, I said grub. One, one ring in front of the tub. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and do every one of them. Y'all watch me, y'all get bored to death. Y'all got better things to do than that. Then I'm going to put them in this mold, okay? And I got to put each one of them back in the cavity like that to where it goes. Okay? Guys, you might even have a better picture now. I just realized I just changed the battery. I just realized I had the uh, Polaroid lens on there. Okay? So I'm cutting all those for that. Now, like I said, I'm not going to film all that. I don't know how much I got to see my camera die, so. Now, this is this is half of the mold. I'm gonna put, the, what I'm gonna do, I got a carving knife here, is I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna cut off where they connect to the, to the runner. Everybody calls this thing a different thing. This little, Chris Jones calls it a runner, the next time he calls it a spew, a spew or whatever. I think he's right. That makes more sense. It's a runner because it's running down the middle of the mold, right? All right. I don't know. <laughs> now, let me tell you what. The hardest thing is getting these little tails before they go. Now, I put some oil on here last time, and it's still some on. I can fill it. You put a little oil. Now, I, now I use, guys, I'm using worm oil. I can still fill the oil on there. Now, I'm going to take this. is the other half, see? Now I can pour the blue in that, and we have bluegrass. Now let me get these tails done. I'm gonna start some blue in the microwave. All right, guys, let's pull the blue out. Anytime you're doing remelts, you need to make sure you don't have any lumps in it, okay? If you got a lump in it, I'm gonna tell you what, it's gonna cause you a headache. Now we need to make sure we're 301. You need to be just a few seconds hotter. Let's jump it up about 15 seconds. You gotta watch, like I said a while ago, when I was trying to warm the chartreuse, I think it's when I said it. But anyway, I'm gonna say it again. You gotta watch. 15, 20 seconds can be a lot. This is a 700 watt microwave. Some, a lot of y'all guys are probably using 800, 900 watts. All that makes a difference, right? If you got a stronger microwave. This one says right here, 700 watts. This was my son's leftover from uh, college. Okay. He's been out of college about two years. All right, it's 440, I mean 340, which is good. I'm going to put a little lean right here so I can add a few bubbles in it, but I think that's, I'm going to go on. I do have a, 
I do have a uh, vacuum chamber. I'm just going to hold there for a second on those bodies. All right. When you hold some pressure, hold it for a little bit, and you got it this hot, when it's that's this hot at 325, 335, 335, excuse me, it, it, it uh, injects easy. The hotter it is, the more liquefied it comes. It gets runnier, okay? So you got to be very careful because you see how it overflow there, which that's fine. That'll pull, peel right off. But that's because I had some pressure on it pushing against those bodies, okay? Not a whole lot, just enough. When it stopped, I just held it. I didn't keep pushing. I just held it. But when you pull the handle back sometimes, you still got a little bit of that pressure. That's why you get that. You still have a little bit too much pressure on it. But she's really hot. You know, that's not a good thing for it to, you know, to have that much pressure. But you got to put enough on there. Hold, hold enough pressure on there for it to, to make uh, to, to bond to the sharp tooth bottoms. Now, we're going to give those a few minutes. And we're going to check and see if, we, see if we have a good bond. Okay? Okay. Some of y'all probably say, Dennis, what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is if you don't put, you don't want to put too much pressure because something, something that's 325 degrees, if it squirts out everywhere, it's going to burn you, get all, burn your clothes, burn your skin, but you got to put enough pressure to push it back so, it's, so it melts, okay, to these tails, all right? So you got to find that fine medium liner, and sometimes I get a little too rough, all right? Now that's a medium blue, it's not real dark, and it's still kind of a see-through blue. You could go darker. If you want them darker, you could go to a darker blue. You could change the blue to any way you want it. All right? So this is good for light stained water to, you know, to even clear water early in the morning, late in the evening. All right? That's the, that's the willow tails. We'll fish with those one day. All right? We'll probably do, we might, I don't know if we're using the same day or not, guys. We'll do, if we do, I'll send you some. All right? Bam. I know they poured up. Oh man. Okay. What do y'all think? Sharp trues with blue back. All right. There's one that didn't come out. Now see, y'all, y'all see me put the pressure to it. There's two that didn't come out. So I gotta make another batch. There's three. And that's what I was talking about. If you don't get enough pressure, they don't fill out. See, this one didn't fill out. He don't have the blue on his back. And y'all seen that I held the pressure for a little bit. It got air in there, and that air pocket didn't let the plastic go in. That's why you got to push a little bit. And another thing is, these things are vented, and some plastic could have gotten the vent crack or anything, so the air didn't go out. See, that one's perfect. Isn't that pretty? So it's got a chartreuse bottom. It's got that pretty light blue, medium blue back. I'm going to call it a medium blue. They ought to eat that up, shouldn't they? Y'all know that could be good. All right. I'm going to make another batch and replace the two that didn't make it. Okay? Three that didn't make it. So that means i got to make another batch. But they look like they're bonded here. See, what I was talking about was this blue has got to melt to the chartreuse, right? That's what I was talking about. If you don't get it hot enough, it won't do that. And you want to hold pressure for a second so, so that uh, you're pushing the air and stuff out. And so now, evidently, I didn't push it. And y'all seen it overflow when I pulled it out. But I didn't push it hard enough, did I? That's what I'm talking about. It's a happy medium there sometimes, guys. Sometimes a happy medium is hard to hit. All right, guys. Number three, one, one and 150. We're still doing 150. And uh, whoever gets close to the number without going over, let's say the number is 110. And I have 100. Somebody hits 105. Somebody says 112. They went over. The 105 is going to win. Got to have some way, guys, to separate the winners from losers. And that's the easiest way I know to do it. Uh, every week there will be a winner, and there's been there's been uh, three people that's won twice. So, uh, and it seems like when I, I send the baits out, everybody's happy with them. People are making good comments about the baits. They're catching fish on them. That's what it's all about, guys. All right, put your number down. Appreciate each and every one of you. Hit the like button, guys. That helps us on YouTube. They pass us around more when when we get more likes. Okay, so I continue to try to grow this channel. May I can retire one of these days. Who knows? Uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Let's, let's watch the videos what kind of fish I catch on the bluegrass stinger. Okay, and the bluegrass willow tails. Alright, see y'all at the end. Got one of them finally.
If I had to find a color they'd hit. That's a nice one. All right, guys. That's on the bluegrass shad body. It's a nice crappie. There you go. Let me show you what I was using. I call this I call this bluegrass, guys. The top's blue and the bottom's chartreuse. But it's a few crappie here. I'll show you. Uh, just talking to these fellas over here. They're they're uh, rigging. They got the uh, outriggers and stuff, and they're catching a few. I'll show you right here. Oops. There you go. You can see them right here. Alright guys, bluegrass, my favorite music. There you go guys. Some of y'all listen to my channel, if you listen to the music in the beginning at the end, my son's playing that. He's a professional bluegrass musician. He made all that and he's got albums and plays with a good band and has played with a lot of the big shots. Has played on other people's records, recordings and does all that kind of stuff. Studio musicians, you want to call it. But he's making all the music on this. Oh my gosh. Get this one out of here. He act like a big one. I think I got him out past the dock now. <laughs> That's what you got to watch. They get you around the post and you get a big one back in there. I'll show you all what they look like here in a minute. Let me get a couple of these. That's a nice one. Bam! All right, tag. And these fish really look white, guys, because we haven't the water's so nasty. It's been nasty for a week or so, and it's going to be a while. I don't know if we ever see clear water to winter time. Bluegrass. That's a nice fish, guys. Woo-wee. Okay. That's a 12 and a half, two 13-inch fish. Maybe bigger. Oh, yeah, guys. He's 13 inches. I thought, I thought he was 12, 12 and a half. At least, bam, he took off like a streak of lightning. All right, some of y'all guys probably wonder this, you rush your hands after every fish. I do, guys, because I got to handle this camera and everything. I got to handle the batteries in and out of it. So I try to keep my hands somewhat clean so I don't get fish slime all over my cameras, <laughs> all my batteries. Yeah, all that stuff fits too, if you ever been a GoPro, Batteries are little and all of it fits really tight. Little card in there, a little SD card in there. So all that's, if you get any dirt and slime in there, she's over with. All right, guys, there they are. That's the ones I'm casting at with the old bluegrass bait. All right. And you can see they're about, uh, this is 20 feet. They're 25, they're 10 to 12 feet back there. All right, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can catch a couple more. All right, guys, I lost the last one here. And he was a nice one. He got me, my line got hung up on a splinter on the dock there. And uh, I'm going to pick him up. I see he's hooked good. On a splinter on that 2 by 10 band board right there, I see a little cut in the board. My line got caught in there. And he come up and flopped right there at that board because my line was caught in it. And I was... I could see it was caught in it, but there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. I was going toward it. But anyway, he's, he might, I don't think he's going to make 10. He's in that area, nine and a half. Old bluegrass. Let's see if we can find another big one. You know, big crap. Here's some in open water right here. Right here's some in open water. Look here. See this fish right there in open water? I haven't been using my other camera much, guys. I have to get the right angle oh my troll motor has worked fine all morning it's 12 o'clock it worked good for two hours turn right now it's not turning oh, they don't went on now but it might have been what I noticed when I lost that big fish there was about six or eight of them underneath there bigger fish with, with above the small ones I threw in the first cast. One of the big ones rolled up and got it. 
I got him out, like I say, to the corner of that dock. My line, the lake's up by six inches, guys. And we don't have a lot of opening under the docks, you can tell that. And uh, my line got caught on that band board. And I was like just trying to get it off. And the fish jumped and flopped right there on top of the water and got off. After that, I looked back under there and they were going. So that must be them right there. They must have came out because I, I noticed two or three coming toward me. Some came with him. You know how the other fish were following him? Uh, they came with the one I was fighting. And once I got the, uh, that fish out, like I said, I looked back under there and they were gone. All right, guys, this is going to be tough dock fishing now with trolling motors only turning left. So, so that's what that switch does. It'll work right for a while, then it quits. And it, it, to me, it's like it gets hot. See, it was cold this morning. It's finally warming up. Maybe I ought to put a piece of ice down here on it. I got some ice in my cooler. May, may I, uh, I got a frozen bottle. Maybe I'll lay it on the switch down here. See if I can cool it. I don't know. Just a thought. Anything would be nice to keep my trolling motor working. It's a pain when your trolling motor don't work, guys. Spot, not having spot locks bad enough, but when you can't turn it left and right, that's awful. You can only turn it one direction. All right, let's see if it catch one live action here. Now, I just seen two fish under the boat take off running, so they, they heard the trolling motor. All right, here's what I gotta do, guys. Oh, you ain't gonna do that now? Oh, guess what? It ain't gonna move either direction now, guys. <laughs> all right, I think my fishing day is over. Hey, folks. Thank y'all for watching Fishing Lake Country to start with, guys. I appreciate you. Hey, I was having a struggle. I was struggling on this day, but I caught fish, okay? The, uh, the water's the water stained. It's up. The fish are averaging 10 to 12 feet to maybe to 15 feet under docks. The lake being up means the opening's smaller to cast back under the docks. So all that happened. We've been having some cold nights because this is late fall, and the water's cooling. You know, it's averaging. It got down to 55 at one time. And it's, with the sun hitting, it's averaging about 56 to 57. But the fish act a little different as we're going into this late fall, early winter. Okay? The, uh, they're scattered all over the lake. And when you find a school, they're back on a, on a dock, uh, in the deepest part of the dock, in the darkest part of the dock, okay? The shadiest part. That's why they're hard to get to. All right? And then my trolling motor's acting up. Got a switch order for it, guys. You know, that this is Ultratrex. It has all these different features. And when you cut it on... I understand there's like a motherboard in that switch, and it's shortening out. So it, it'll run fine for a little bit. I'm not using the spot lock, but it'll run. It'll cut, turn left and right, maybe for an hour, maybe two hours, maybe 15 minutes. Then sometimes she just locks up. She won't turn either way. So that's what happened on me on this trip. She locked up. I can come home, put it in the garage, go back out there an hour later, put it down, and it'll work. I don't know if it's overheating or what, but I'll be glad when my new switch come in. Okay, it's been three weeks, guys, and it hasn't showed up yet. This is what I was using. It's bluegrass. As you can see, it's got that light blue back that we poured and that chartreuse belly. Great color. You know, Bobby Girl's got a bait that calls bluegrass, and that's what, it's what it is. It's a chartreuse bottom. It's a blue back. That's what I was trying to match. Uh, it's a little stinger shad. It has a great little tail. This has been a great bait, bait for me, guys. This is the new mold. One of the new ones I got the wheel tail on this one. And... Uh, I wasn't sure about it. When you look at the molds on the on online, it's it's really hard to tell until you get them at home and pour you in bait. It really what makes a difference. When you pour that bait and pull it out and go like, wow. As soon as I pulled the first set out and looked at these baits, I thought, they're going to be good. It has a good shad shape to it, doesn't it? All right? And it's about the perfect size, isn't it? So this has really been a good bait for me. The other one is the tank shad. The tank shad doesn't get a lot of credit either, guys. And the willow tails, what you hear about everywhere you go, okay? It's a good bait. Don't get me wrong. I said this in another video. It, the willow tail's a good bait. That stinger shad is just as good, I'm telling you. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for all that you do, guys. Hope you enjoy these four to catch. I have getting good comments. People saying they like to see me making the bait and fishing with it. That's what it's all about. And somebody gets some of them. So put your number down there. There's been a winner every video. I mail out every week. You know, some of the folks have come back and, and said they've enjoyed the baits. Uh, they've caught fish on them. So that's what it's all about, guys. I'm doing something and sharing it with you. All right? Appreciate each and every one of you. Okay? On Wednesdays, it's just a fun video. Sundays, sport a catch. I got some bass videos I'm working on. 
And I usually throw those, those items uh, in on Fridays. Usually on Friday I throw them in, okay? So we're getting this time of year, though. Fishing's going to get tough on me. So y'all might see a bass video on a Wednesday, too. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Put your number down. Pour the catch. My name is Dennis. We'll see you next time right here. Thank you.